Hello everybody, welcome to a new tutorial from sound 4 mo it's Leo speaking. In this video we are going to go through or start, I would say, uh, properly the series or to how to use Camelot Pro, a fantastic app to manage your live performances. Before I start, I would like to remind my viewers to subscribe unless you have already done so, as that will help the channel with bringing more videos and tutorials and uh, also giveaways. Okay, let's start. So this first video and maybe also the second one are going to be an, um, a starting point for people which never used uh, an Camelot Pro. So if you are an expert user, you might use these as a refresher or maybe you want to skip it up to you. So uh, on the left hand side, as you open an Camelot Pro, um, you should see a selection of set list. Um, if you don't click here at the bottom where it says song and it will bring you back to the view a set list. So a set list is a container is a repository for all your songs. So you can use set list to organize, for example, all your songs that you're going to play at an event or to a particular or specific uh, performance or live performance. And, and that becomes handy as you, um, you want to manage uh, a large repertoire of different songs for a, a large number of events. So let's click, for example, a new set list mm, on the plus sign to create a new one. You can create one from scratch. So starting with an empty set list, as it says here, you can paste one if you have something on the clipboard and you can import it from a file. So for example, you might want to share with a friend or another artist a set list. In the case that particular person would have uh, exported that set list and then you can import it as well inside your Camelot Pro instance. So let's click on uh, from scratch and let's uh, name these two some for more set list and let's click on proceed. As you can see, a new set list has been created with which is named SFM set list. And, and on the right hand side, it shows you that there is one empty song inside that list. A set list cannot exist unless there is a song and therefore it has created for you a default song called empty song. If indeed you click on the demo set list, you see three different song, songs, so a different uh, uh, set list itself. Um, so, but let's go back to the song for more set list. You have an item on the right hand side of each of the records, uh, which has these symbols here with uh, arrows pointing up and down left and right with a dot in the middle. If you click and hold on it and then you move, you can uh, reorder, reorganize your items and record inside the Camelot Pro. And that works for set list, for songs here on the right hand side, etc. throughout the application. You have three dots here. When you see three dots, you can click on it and you have a selection of the context menu related to that particular record. You see also selection in light gray. So in this case, I have selected SFM set list. If I click on the demo set list, you see the light gray has moved on. And you can see the selection here as well. In this case, you have a simple demo song, which is selected why song number two and three are not selected i definitely recommend before acting on a record or item to actually select it first because i have seen always um, well i've seen some strange behaviors uh, inside the application in some cases it works if you click on the context menu of an items which as is not selected in other cases he applies uh, uh, the action only on the item which is selected which might not be where you clicked uh, the context menu so all always uh, select first uh, uh, the item you want to action against to. So let's click on the three dots. You can rename uh, that particular list, as you can see. It comes up here with the previous name and you can change it, then click on proceed. Or you can change the color, which becomes very handy, particularly when you have a lot of different set lists, a lot of different events. For example, you can say all the red events uh, are for, um, I don't know, outdoor concert or all the blue, um, and set list that are from performance inside the nightclubs, whatever you prefer. So it becomes quite handy when you want to use it with a large set of set list and songs. You can export the set list. And as you can see, you have two mandatory options, which you cannot deselect here. So in this case, you are exporting the data, which in this case contain the set list info songs, scenes, layers, and items, but also the user custom MIDI maps. So these two are mandatory, but you can also decide to export attachment like PDF, pictures and annotation, and also backing tracks. If indeed <clears throat> you have loaded backing tracks inside 
and your set list and song. I click outside because I don't want to do that. So as a, um, and also uh, finally you can delete also a set list. You just click yes or no and it will delete for you. So as I mentioned earlier, a set list cannot be empty. So you need to have at least one song. So when you create a set list from scratch, it will uh, create automatically a song and it will give uh, that song the name empty song, as you can see here. So let's click on the three dots and you can see you have a selection on the song info, which will give you some information like an identifier and also which set list that song belongs to. Other options, you can duplicate that uh, um, song like so. You can rename the song. So let's change the name to song one, enter like so. Let's do that also for the second one, rename like so, song two. <coughs> and then proceed. Then you can also export the song and the menu is very similar to the one used to export set list with the difference that at the very top, it doesn't say set list data, it say it goes from the song and anything contained in that song, which therefore would be scenes, layers and items, but not set list. So same concept of exporting set list as well. Next, you can remove it. In this case, it will not allow me to remove the song because it's currently selected. So if I want to remove a song, I have to ensure that it's not selected. So in this case, I click the contest menu here for song two and I click remove the song two has now disappeared. Now let's go back to song number one, duplicate that and let's change the name of song one copy to be song one two enter. Okay. So next, you see um, another option here, which is add to. If you click on it, it will ask you where to add song one. So we'll say add it to demo set list, and then it will ask you to create a duplicate copy, a reference copy. So that means that when you change a one of the two copy, will, the other one will change. That is what they referenced, or literally move there. Let's click on duplicate. So nothing looks, um, it has happened. In reality, if you go to demo set list, you can see song one copy, which has been created as a duplicate or song one inside demo set list. So let's click on remove to remove the song. So this is how you can um, <clears throat> add um, uh, songs um, to another set list, moving them duplicating them or duplicating them, but with a link so that when you change one, the other one will change. And if I remember, I'll show you that in the tutorial next or in this video, if there is time. So on the top, you see a search song. This is where you can search for songs and that becomes really useful when you have a large number of songs. Here you can um, transpose down all the different songs. You see here it says minus one transpose, minus one transpose for song number two. And also it says here at the bottom <clears throat> in the status bar, um, it says minus one transpose. And you can transpose it up clicking here on the sharp. Okay. Here you have also a selection which allows you to um, select all the items. And then when you have all, select them all or some of them, you can remove them or click uh, add to, and then you can use this exactly the same menu uh, to duplicate, just copy or move the songs that you have selected to different set list. So really nice. At the bottom here, you find a plus sign. So click on the plus sign. This is where uh, it gives you the ability again to create a, a song directly inside the set list, which um, you have selected. Let's click sort of from scratch. Let's uh, type these as song free and let's click proceed. When you add the song in this way, it goes straight away inside the song and you can see the selection on the status bar at the bottom and move to scenes. So if you go back to songs here, it goes back to uh, the view where you have the set list and it shows you you have now three songs, song one, two and three. Okay, so <clears throat> now let's double click on a song and it will move you to the scenes as you've seen a moment ago. In this case, you have selected song three and it shows you that there is a scene inside, which is called new scene, and it says number one. On the top also, you see the set list, in this case, some for more set list, the song, song free, and also see, you see the scene, new scene, and then a CPU util utilization. You have two arrows here. If you click left, it moves to song two, <clears throat> new scene, left, song one, new scene, and then it doesn't move anymore because there are no songs in the set list before song one. So you can move like so between the different songs or you can click on the different uh, <clears throat> headers for each of the songs. 
This symbol is to undo anything. This is to save, and this is to have your menu where you can uh, <clears throat> have a lot of different options. But I show you, I will show you that in another tutorial. So let's start with song number one. If you click on the symbol here, it will move you to the timeline related to that song. Let's go back to scenes. If you click on this button, which is a pencil, you edit, and then in this case, you can go to new scene and just change the name, scene one, and click proceed. As you can see, you have a plus sign here again, which allows you to add another one. You can click on these to uh, undo the changes. You can click on these again, redo them again, and click proceed and click done. So in this case, we have created a C1. Click edit again, as you can see, you can uh, click on this button to duplicate the particular one. So we have created a copy now, so we can go inside that one and, and change the name to scene two and click proceed and click done. Okay, so in this case, we have created two scenes, scenes one and scene two inside song one. And you can do the same, of course, for all the other different scenes. So scene one for that and uh, click done. And then we select uh, this one and we name this one scene one. Okay, so you can see how quickly you can actually change um, scenes and um, <clears throat> add new ones as you need. So um, really nice, really straightforward. And you can see as well how these has now changed in terms of layout. You have two scenes here, and therefore the screen has been split in two uh, with different colors as well. If you double click on a scene, then it will move you inside the layers. And this you can see straight away the layers created for you. At the bottom you have the set list, then song one, and then uh, uh, on the top you have the scene and this is where you can start to add layers so I'm clicking on the plus sign which i will show you in the next tutorial here is where you can edit again uh, the scene if you need so and therefore you can edit this um, everything else here as well and of course you can go back to uh, the scenes concept for all the different songs or to the very top of the menu songs. One thing I want to show you before leaving you from this tutorial is let's delete this uh, set list. So we go back to the beginning um, or as it was when you first launched Camelot Pro. So you might think that the deletion uh, is a little bit too hard in terms of uh, not, not being safe. It doesn't ask you if you want to delete yes or no. But in reality, it's not deleting anything. It's moving what you delete uh, as songs inside your song archive. And this is where you find your song archive. You click on it. <clears throat> and as you go inside, you have a, a, a toolbar here where you can search song and you can apply different changes to multiple items. You have a selection here of all songs and then all unused song. And as you can see here, you have all the songs which have been deleted uh, or well created by myself and also deleted. So in this case, I could select uh, this symbol here to select them all and then I can click remove and it will ask me yes or no. Yes, I still have the three songs which belong to the demo set list and I can click back and verify that inside the demo set list I still have the three default songs assigned to that set list. Okay, so this was a quick tutorial. So now you know how to create set list songs, how to move them, copying, uh, copying them with um, <clears throat> ghosting or references and then you know how to create scene inside each of your uh, um, different uh, um, songs i'll briefly show you the timeline and also the layers which will uh, go through in more details in the next tutorial okay thank you very much i hope you enjoyed see you in the next video bye